Okay, so let's jump right in and start building some virtual machines uh, for our Exchange 2013 test lab. So I've done a little bit of preparation work on this machine. I've uh, just dropped uh, some ISO files for Windows Server 2012 and Windows 7 Professional uh, onto one of the hard disks on my machine, just in this subfolder here. And I've also installed uh, the Hyper-V feature on this workstation as well. So you can see that in uh, control panel and programs and features. Uh, turn Windows features on or off and you'll see the Hyper-V selections here. I've just installed all those components. I've got both the uh, Hyper-V feature as well as all the management tools as well. Now if you, uh, you may want to double check as well that in your system BIOS on your computer that uh, the virtualization uh, technology is enabled because sometimes uh, I've seen the, the biases on the motherboards will ship with that feature disabled for some reason. Okay, so with all that stuff installed, you can fire up your Hyper-V manager and uh, connect to your workstation. So I've got no virtual machines set up so far. The first thing I'm actually going to do is create a uh, virtual switch and I'm just choosing the type external because I want these machines to be able to connect uh, to other parts of my network and to the internet as well. I'm not going to do any uh, fancy routing or natting or anything like that. So let's just call that... I'm just going to call that external access and bind it to uh, my Ethernet controller on the, um, on the PC I'm on. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is install a Windows Server 2012 machine that I'm going to then uh, sysprep and shut down and use as a differencing disk or as the source disk for a differencing disk uh, for my other virtual machines. So this is just to save on space on my uh, hard drive. I'm going to uh, use differencing disks because that's a little bit more efficient. If you don't have any space concerns, then you could just spin up each uh, virtual machine independently, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so let's just walk through the new virtual machine wizard. Uh, I'm just going to call this base uh, 2012. And I'm fine with that location to store the virtual machine. So when it comes to choosing the generation of the virtual machine, I'm going to stick with generation 1 uh, because uh, with this version of Windows, there's uh, some, some quirks with uh, keyboard and mouse. Uh, access to Hyper-V, so I'm just going to stick with Generation 1 at this point. Um, there's nothing in the Generation 2 features that uh, uh, I really, we really need for the Exchange Boot Camp anyway. Uh, I'll give this one 2 gigabytes of memory, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be shut down anyway. External access so that I can uh, patch it as well before I shut it down. And let's drop a virtual disk in, and we'll call that base 2012 is fine. And I only want that to be about uh, 60 gigabytes. All right, so we'll go ahead and choose uh, the Windows Server 2012 ISO file to install an operating system. So I'm happy with all that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click Finish. And now we can go ahead and start up that virtual machine. Just connect to it, power it on, and start installing Windows Server. Now there's not too much you need to worry about with the, uh, the initial setup of Windows Server. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to choose the languages and, and currency and formats and things like that uh, to suit you. Um, you will need a uh, product key for the installation. Um, if you've got a TechNet subscription or an MSDN subscription, you can use one of those keys. If you've downloaded the trial from Microsoft uh, for Windows Server, then uh, they should provide that key for you. And just make sure that you choose a server with a GUI, which um, is required for any Exchange server. OK, 
Okay. So the Windows setup is, is pretty quick, especially on SSDs. Um, so uh, we'll pause here and come back in just a few moments uh, to complete some of the other initial setup tasks before we sysprep the machine. Okay, so I've jumped ahead now to the first boot after setup completes and of course we need to choose a password for the administrator account. And there we are, ready to log in and get started. So uh, just hit control or delete. Now I'll just give that a moment for the server manager to launch. So jumping down here to the local server uh, section, there's basically a couple of things that, uh, that I want to do here. Now my server's just picked up an IP address from DHCP on my network, so that's fine. I don't want to do uh, anything else there. I do want to run a Windows update, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And this is just to make sure that, uh, you know, it's as, it's as up to date as possible for when I'm building my other virtual machines and I don't have to uh, re-update every single one of them that I build uh, in my test lab. So just turn that on, let it check for updates and uh, go ahead and in download and install uh, any available updates for, for Windows Server at the time. Okay, so we're back from uh, Windows Update. I've restarted my server, and uh, look, the only other things I've done to this server, I'm going to keep it fairly simple, is uh, I'm just going to change the time zone to suit my location here in Brisbane. I've also turned off the uh, IE Enhanced Security Configuration for uh, administrators only and also enabled uh, remote desktop so that I can RDP to my servers. Um, but apart from that, uh, really not much needed to be done for this base image. So in Windows Explorer, just go to uh, C Windows System 32 in the sysprep folder and we're going to run uh, sysprep. Now what you want to set is uh, this cleanup action to enter system out of box experience tick the box to generalize and then choose shutdown. All right, so after a few minutes, uh, the virtual machine will power down and we can close that. Now, just take a note of uh, where the hard drive is located. The virtual hard drive is actually located. So I'm just gonna copy that path. And what we can do now is delete the virtual machine itself. And then jump over to where that virtual hard disk is installed. Um, so in my case, C uses public documents, uh, Hyper-V virtual disk, and I'm just going to mark that file as read only. Apply that change. So now it's ready to be the, uh, the source disk basically for differencing disks for uh, all of my other virtual machines. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll actually install uh, the domain controller and set up Active Directory for the test lab.